now again we back to our solutions and you can see right now we have this one and actually x1 x2 uh, is governed by that one basically is in this form okay so this form is something like this and c1 c2 actually is our vibration modes okay c1 c2 we don't know their value but they are in their vibration modes so Right now, I'm going to write up the form of the solutions. The solution simply is this. Let me start from here. So up to now, we talk about in the first step. The second step, once we have the vectors, so this one, this is our vibration solution. And that one is a vector x1, sorry, x1t, x2t, because these are two degree freedom we always express in terms of vectors, of the common vectors. And listen this carefully. Right now, I'm going to deliver the very, another key concept, and this is new to everyone, okay, and to everyone here except me. The response is in, listen this carefully, the response is in linear combinations of the vibration modes, period. If you like, you can write it down. And mathematically, let me write it up here. For this example, this is the first mode. This is the second mode. in linear combination. So I'm gonna run it out the combination coefficients. <coughs> combination coefficient is this. Simply is alpha. I need more space. So this is in linear combinations in the coefficients. This one is corresponding to omega one. So combination coefficient is alpha of harmonic cosine. This corresponding to first natural frequency. So oops. Omega one. Again, in harmonic combinations, we have two p plus p and beta. So let me put it the color. This is omega two. The combinations, combination is in terms of the harmonic form. Okay, and each associate harmonic is governed by the natural frequencies that associated with that particular vector mode. Okay, so that is the things we described here and in theory. So once we have the two modes together and that is in linear combination, in concept is in linear combination and the remaining we simply simplify AB uh, furthermore and that is showing in this page here. Okay, that is the whole concepts here, okay? So basically from here, um, right now, once we have this one, let me put it here. Okay, so that is the general form, and from here you can see how many unknowns we, we need to solve, alpha, C, and here I would say this is a phi one, okay, for different modes. And here I would say this is a phi two. So one, two, three, four. We have four um, alpha, phi one, beta, phi two can be determined to be determined 
by the initial conditions. Okay, so for example, if we have initial conditions, um, something like one, and then X2, X2. If we have a, such a, initial conditions, then you simply be patient. So that means from here you have no X1 equal to alpha times this term times one plus beta times this term times one. X2 equal to the similar term part, uh, multiplied with two plus this term multiplied with minus five. Okay, plug in this equation carefully, then you can solve for the four and else. And under this case, uh, alpha will be equal to five, seven, beta equal to two, seven, and C one equal to zero, and B two equal to zero. And that it makes sense, because here we don't have any damping, so we wouldn't expect any uh, phase in the or uh, any phase angle here. To this step, we completely solve for the free vibration response. Are we okay? And the final note I want to give, give to you is this. For our first vibration mode, and that is in one tube. Okay, so let me try to uh, graphically uh, draw the relative uh, the uh, relations. So, for example, this is our uh, the first mass, the second mass. Okay, the first mode representing is such a way. If this is the x1, this is our x2, okay? If x1 is moved by one portion, x2 will be moved by two portions. So this is our first mode. Or vice versa, they synchronize at the same as relation of the magnitude, okay? Again, this if this is the one portion, and this will be the two portions, okay? And the second mode is one minus five. Then here you can see if the first one moved by one portion here, the second one moved by the negative five portions, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the vibration mode is such that the two things is simply in uh, 180 degrees difference. So they either move together toward each other or move away from each other. That is the second mode. Are we okay? Okay, so basically this one moving like this. Yes. Um, so is X2 defined relative to X1 or yes. is, it, is it absolutely relative? Uh, which one you? X2 and X1. X2 okay. and yeah, X1, X1, yes. So from using the sign convention, for example, here we define positive toward the right way. Right. So for example, the negative five, that meaning this will move in this way. So for example, okay, here we talk about this relation. If X1 moved by one version, X2 will be negative Five of that version of that portion. So, for example, if x one move by this, then x two will go in that way. On the other side, relative to its initial position. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. So that is pretty much everything, and uh, for this, and you can give it a try and manually and solve it uh, by math, and I encourage you to try both. Okay. And you might not be able to complete homework 12 because I'm still lacking one 
peace to you and uh, the that's called the uh, normalized um, um, vibration vector and also that's called the orthogonality property. I need Monday's lecture to kick in. So uh, homework 12, I have uh, modified it to a deadline from Sunday to Tuesday, I believe. That has been extended. Allow me to give you more information. But if you only uh, directly read the tutorial by yourself on the homework 12, I think you can do it. If you like, you can complete everything. But when you go mind, it's like, I'll send it to you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not too much.